ಇಷ್ಟಪಡ ಒಂದಷ್ಟು ಎರಡು ಎರಡು ಸಕ್ಕ ಇವೆರಡ ಇದು ಇರು ಇದು ಇವೆರಡು ಲೈಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಫ್ಯಾನ್ ಬೇಡ ಹೋಗ್ಯಾ ಕನ್ನಷ್ಟು ಇವು ಎಡ ಫ್ಯಾನ್ ಅಲ್ಲೋ ಲೈಟ್ ಇರಲಿ ಲೈಟ್ ಬೇಕು ಬಿಡು ಹಿಂಗೆ ಯಾಕೆ ಮಾಡ್ತೀನಿ ಇದು ಹೆಂಗೆ ಇದು ಹೆಂಗೆ ಕಾಣಿಸೋದು ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಏನರ ಲೈಟ್ ಅದ ಏನು ಹಾಂ ಹಾಂ ಆ ಬಾಲ ಮುಂದೆ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಂಡು ಹೋಗ್ತೀವಿ ಇವು ರೆಕಾರ್ಡ್ ಹಾಕಿ ತಗೋದು ಬಾಲ ಮುಂದೆ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಂಡು ಹೋಗ್ ಸಾಕು ಓಕೆ ಗುಡ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ನೂನ್ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಎಸ್ಟರ್ಡೆ ವಿ ಸ್ಟಾಪ್ ಡ್ಯಾಟ್ ದಿ ವ್ಯಾಮ್ ಮೆಥಡ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಕನ್ಸಿಡರ್ಡ್ ಫೋರ್ ಮೆಥಡ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾರ್ತ್ ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ಕಾರ್ನರ್ ರೂಲ್ ರೋ ಮಿನಿಮಾ ಕಾಲಮ್ ಮಿನಿಮಾ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿ ಲೀಸ್ಟ್ ಕಾಸ್ಟ್ ಸೆಲ್ ಮೆಥಡ್ ಆರ್ ಮ್ಯಾಟ್ರಿಕ್ಸ್ ಮಿನಿಮಾ ಮೆಥಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಿ ಫೌಂಡ್ ಔಟ್ ದಟ್ ದ ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟಿವ್ಲಿ ದ ಕಾಸ್ಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಅರೌಂಡ್ ಲೆವೆನ್ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಲೆವೆನ್ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಟೂ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಲೆವೆನ್ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಲೆವೆನ್ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಟ್ ಸೊ ಲೆಟ್ ಅಸ್ ಯೂಸ್ ಓಗಲ್ಸ್ ಅಪ್ರಾಕ್ಸಿಮೇಷನ್ ಮೆಥಡ್ ಆರ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಅಸ್ ಅಪ್ಲೈ ದ ಓಗಲ್ಸ್ ಅಪ್ರಾಕ್ಸಿಮೇಷನ್ ಮೆಥಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಓಕೆ ದ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಇಟ್ ಗೋಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಿಸ್ P1, P2, P3, D1, D2, D3, D4. Availability, 6 million liters, 1 million liters, 10 million liters. I believe this is 7 million liters. This is 3 million liters, 2 million research. And this is 5 million liters. and the respective cost were 2 3 11 7 1 0 6 1 5 8 15 and 9 as i told you the wam method this is what we are going to discuss is the wam method vogel's approximation method that means approximation method in the sense it is going to give us almost approximate optimal solution or it will give us the near optimal solution unlike the other solutions methods or feasible solution methods so how what it considers is it will not only consider the least cost but it also considers if particular cell is missed how much penalty is going to be attached to that so that that cell should get allocated first whichever cell has got the more penalty that should get allocated first so here we will calculate penalties row wise as well as column wise so whichever has got the more penalty that row or column will select and then having select row or column then will allocate to the least cost cell okay how it proceeds let us see first we need to find out the penalties what are these penalties that means these are the costs we need to consider only the cost which one is the least and which one is the next least okay here the least is 2 next least is 3 
3. That, that means the difference is going to be 1. Okay, for this row. First, that means what? I should allocate to this. If I miss this one, I am going to pay the penalty of, instead of allocating this one, if I allocate this one, I have to go, go on giving the penalty of 1 here. That is what it means. Similarly, for this one, it is 0 and 1. This one is also penalty 1. And if we come over here, list is 5, next list is 3. Now if you go the column wise, 2 and 1. And this one is 3 and 0, 3. This one is 11, 6. This is going to be 5. Okay? 11, 6. It is going to be 5. Next one is 7, 1. The difference is going to be 6. Out of these things, whichever has got the maximum penalty that we are going to consider. The maximum penalty over here is... It happens for this particular column. That means I am going to select this D4 column. Why? If I miss this column, the penalty I have to pay is more. That means these are nothing but that is what I have found out. Because if I miss this column, it says that you have to pay maximum penalty. That means we should allocate it to that particular column first. You might wonder sometimes, here also it is 6. Somewhere also it is 6. In that case, what is to be done? You can choose it arbitrarily. There is no doubt about it. No question about it. That is arbitrarily these things you can choose. Okay? Now, fortunately, there is going to be only unique this thing. Because if the, these things were not there, the, the things were between this one and this one, only 3, 5 were not there, 6. They were, in fact, maximum. Then you could have considered either this row or this column arbitrary, arbitrarily, okay? Having understood that one, now we will go to this particular column and where it should get allocated. See, this column should be chosen. Now, that is what I have chosen. Where it should get allocated? Whichever is the least cell. This one is 7, this one is 1, this one is 9. So, it should get the allocation, okay? That I will put a round mark. How much allocation? That means it will be decided by these rim conditions. Here it is 1, here it is 2. Out of these things, whichever is minimum that I need to consider. So maximum allocation possible over here is 1. Having done this one, this becomes 0. This will become 1. Okay. So I cannot consider this row for further allocation. Is it understood? I cannot consider this row for further uh, allocation because it has become zero. No, these things are available now. It has been allocated. Now we are left with these matrix now. Okay. Now we are left with 2 by 4. Again the same penalty these things are to be considered. This one is 2. This one is 3. So again it is going to be 1. This one, no. So this thing itself, they put that row as if it doesn't exist for us. And for here, if I look at it, 5 and 8, this is going to be 3. And if I look at here, this is going to be 3. This is going to be 5. This is going to be 11 and 15. Difference is 4. Okay. Again, here the difference... Here is 9 and 7, it is going to be 2. One more thing, you try to understand over here. Suppose this, this is 2 and this is 5. Instead of 5, if it were 3, what you would have done? That is 2, 3 minus 2, 1. Suppose instead of that one, if it were 2 only, the same. There are two least values. Okay. Then, two list, whenever there are two list values, its penalty will become 
zero. That is what you need to understand. Even in the earlier case, if it were two and one, or here if it were one, one minus one zero, I would have put it. That you try to understand. Okay. Anyway, it was five over here, so I have put it like this. Now, which one is to be chosen now here? Whichever has got the maximum penalty. Which has got the maximum penalty? Three, five, four, two, three, one out of this one because these things are gone now. Okay. So this is the maximum. So I am going to allocate in this particular column, and which one should get allocated? That is what I need to see now. Which one out of this one? If either this one, this shell, or this shell, it has got less, so it gets allocated. How much? Here it is five, and here it is six. So I am going to allocate whatever the maximum is possible. That is five. So this will become zero, and this will become one. Okay. So this is not available for allocation. Okay. Is it understood now? So now what is to be done? Okay. Now again we need to calculate because the moment this one is done, this has become zero. Okay. This gets allocated. So this column is not available for us, and here one is remaining. So for sake of brevity, I'll cancel this one. Again, I'll recalculate these things. So when I recalculate, this is what is the, the difference here? We are going to get this is two, and next list is seven. So two seven minus two, this is going to be five. This one, of course, I am not going to consider. Now here, list is five and nine. That is going to be four. Here it is going to be three. Here it is not there at all. Here it is going to be four. Here it is going to be two. So which is maximum out of these things? This five is maximum, so I'll consider this particular row. Out of this one, which is minimum? Two is the minimum value here. So maximum I can allocate is one here, and seven here. So maximum I can allocate is one. So this will become one. So this becomes zero. So this row is not available for allocation because everything is exhausted, and this has become now six. Try to get it now. This has become six. So, what are the things remaining? Six, zero, three, and one. Now the things will become more simpler. So now, of course, this only this row is left. There are no other columns and other things. First, where I am going to allocate? I will just observe this one. Whichever is the list, list is this five. So, how much I can allocate? Maximum I can allocate is six. So this gets exhausted. And I am left with four. Next, next list is how much? Nine, not fifteen. Next list is nine because just like that, don't go on allocating it because you need to do in a methodical way because it can be programmed. The computer can understand that one. Intuitively, I could have considered this one and then I have, I would have moved over here. But logically, instead of this one, I need to consider this one. This is least compared to this one. How much I can allocate here? Maximum, maximum I can allocate here is one, so it becomes three. And here three is available, three is required, so I allocate like this. What has happened now? Let us see whether the rim conditions are fulfilled or not. One plus five, six. Yes, it fulfills. Here one, it fulfills. Here one plus six seven it fulfills. This is five it fulfills. Three fulfills one plus one this thing. So it fulfills the rim conditions. Hence it is a feasible solution. And now we'll check for the number of allocations. One two three four five six. Bravo. Look, we wanted m plus n minus one. Six allocations. 
we have got six allocations and the rim conditions are satisfied also hence it is not only the feasible solution it is basic feasible solution because the number of allocation always it ensures that number of allocations are less than or equal to m plus n minus 1 and not only that it is exactly equal to m plus n minus 1 hence we can say that it gives non degenerate basic feasible solution okay don't in in this one we might have got like this don't be under the impression that always the wam method gives you the non degenerate basic feasible solution don't be under that wrong impression but one thing is certain it will give you the near optimal solution so let us calculate hence let us calculate the cost okay try to understand that one now fortunately we have got non degenerate basic feasible solution so for testing for optimality it becomes much more easier for us that is what it means so because for testing of, for optimality we need to have non degenerate basic feasible solution not only the basic feasible solution but it should be non degenerate basic feasible solution if it is the degenerate basic feasible solution then we need to make it as the non degenerate basic feasible solution that will see how it can be done but fortunately for this particular problem we are lucky enough that it is already non degenerate basic feasible solution having done that one let us find out what is going to be the total cost okay that is 2 into 1 plus 3 into 5 1 into 1 6 5 into 6 15 into 3 and 9 into 1 so this is 2 15 1 30 45 Nine. You just see here earlier we got it was. 116 into 10 to the power 2 or 112 into 10 to the power of 2 but here we are getting 102 into 10 to the power of 2 that is what the significant difference is there because if we send these things commodities like this we are going to save that much instead of so much say for example 116 we can reduce it to 102 try to understand what is the maximum benefit available over here that is what otherwise by just hunch or by just only one method we cannot we could not have allocated because this is what actually it is being done this is the beauty of this particular method otherwise to find out these things the number of solutions or the generation of number of solutions would have been phenomenally very very high because simplex method because these things what we have to think is now even we can use the simplex method because of the advent in the computers but in 1940s or something like that that 45 when it was developed the computers were not to that level now it might be possible but they were trying to find out the thinking for the uh, trying to find out a better method during those days and it will to the one also now also it will save a lot of memory space or whatever it is however now we have found out that wam method it gives the better solution compared to the other method that is what we wanted to drive at okay is it understood now now what we need to think is 
is it the best solution or is it the optimal solution or is there any other way the cost can be reduced we will say how to check it just by observing here we can say see that why this one is not allocated even though it is zero cost it should have been got allocated why it is not allocated if i allocate something over here can it reduce the cost or something like that just by intuition we can say but instead of that one when we are talking about not subject to objective way there has to be a proper method or proper steps and that proper steps we are going to get because it needs to be tested for optimality that means whether we have reached the optimal condition or not first thing that we need to do if it is optimal solution the current solution itself is the best solution and if that optimality test it says that no current solution is not the best solution then it should tell it is not current solution is not the best solution we can still improve upon that and you should suggest also not only it will say that the current solution is not optimal but it will suggest which is the next path or which is the empty shell these are the empty shells now and which shell is to be allocated one at a time which shell needs to be allocated so that in the existing one shell it will disappear and it gets the new allocation here for example if it gets the allocation here then one of those to because if i make one allocation here that means the number of allocations will be more than m plus n minus 1 it is not possible then okay in that case what we need to the one of them is going to appear how it does and other things we will just see that method the optimality testing method is called as modi method m o d i not modi method or it is not developed by a person called as modi no it is the short form of modified distribution method what this one it is modified distribution method okay just you remember that one and how it works let us see so i will just remove these things and make a fresh table and now onwards we will make in only one table so that the consequently the other things need, can be expressed in those that table only otherwise if you refer some other books he might have developed you may have to draw many number of tables so i am going to use a particular thing okay that if you follow you are going to save the time as well as the paper like that or the time and the paper space time as well as the space now each shell what i will do is i will write like this shell this is the shell each shell and inside this one these allocations i'll write that i say that xij value and at this left top left hand corner i am going to write the value of cij cij or already given this is what i have written okay and xij by using the <coughs> the method that is the vogel's approximation method that feasible solution i have found out this round circle i have put it like this and again that top right hand column i am going to write ui plus vj values what are those ui plus vj values and other things we are going to discuss because that is going to be a part of this modi method and here at this corner i am going to write the difference between this one and this one okay that is in general this is cij minus or we can say that ui plus vj is equal to zj and this one is cij minus sorry just ui plus vj is zij so cij minus 
ZIG. I am going to find out. Okay? And what are these CIG? These are the cos. What is this ZIG? ZIG is nothing but it is the opportunity cost. That is what it means. So this, the difference between these two will be the net evaluation. This is what we are most bothered at about. What is the net evaluation, net result? Whether by allocating something into this particular shell, whether the conditions will improve or not. Whether the conditions will be favorable or not. For that purpose, to find out ZIJ, I need to find out UI and VJ values. These UI and VJ values are called as the Lagrange's coefficients. The UI and VJ, UI and VJ, they are nothing but the Lagrange's 